Hey, what's up, fellas? What we're looking at right here is a Birkeland Ide reactor used to synthesize nitric acid from electricity and thin air. Last week you saw me doing some electrode testing to determine what was going to be the most compatible configuration and metallurgy to make this a long-term process. We observed that these large plasma type smart sparks are more compatible with ozone production than they are with nitric oxide, which is what we see here. The tiny hot arc gives us that 3000 C, but tungsten metal was not compatible with this process due to the tungsten oxide that's produced at around 800 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, well, unfortunately, guys, spark plugs are a no-go. I forgot there's a resistor inside of those. There's six kilo-ohms of resistance between one end and the other on these spark plugs. We weren't able to get that red-hot metal like there like we need. We've got to have that, so not cool. For the Birkelenide reaction to work properly, we need to promote the highest temperatures possible. That is why I did not use the spark plugs. We're going with these electrodes so we can get that red hot metal like we need to ensure we have some good 3000 Kelvin areas in the process. So this is where we are. We got the brown, the brown gas action. I've got a needle valve down here on the bottom of this thing to kind of limit the flow rate. We don't want to overdo it. This is all the time I had. I wanted to throw it together thus far and see what it will do just like this because essentially this section here is acting as an oxygenation chamber based on just the way it's set up. I wanted to do this, but yeah. And I am quite pleased with how well it's doing with just one spark gap. Eventually, here pretty quick, I am uh, going to hook up an array of these spark gaps. I wish I could have done them all like this right here, this side here. But unfortunately, I ran out of parts. So this side here is live. So the whole thing is electrified. You don't want to touch it, which that ain't cool. Basically, I'm going to get more of these ceramic electrodes and put like a whole array of them up inside of this thing. We're about six hours in. Fairly high flow rate, but we still have enough nitrogen dioxide to work with. I'm going to be building the other bubbler soon. We're going to do the dual bubbler action. Can see the brown gas is present. All right, fellas, we're about six hours and 37 minutes in. We've got some good nitrogen dioxide color. I don't know if I'm going to do the oxygenation chamber. The oxygenation. Man, I, why can't I say that word? Oxygenation, man. Come on, dude. Let's do this. We start off with NO2 gas, or NO gas, the nitric oxide, which reacts with oxygen in the flow and then turns into this brown gas, the nitrogen dioxide. That brown gas then dissolves in this water, producing nitric acid and nitrous acid. So what we have to do is after a certain point of time is we're gonna heat this beaker. And upon heating, more nitric oxide will be released and nitric acid will be released also. It converts the HNO2 into HNO3 and NO. Man, it's so tempting. I want to get in there and test it, but I'd have to break all this thing down. It's it's kind of a like an idiot. I didn't put a tap in there where I could just dip in a litmus strip. I wish I would have done it. I spray painted this backside because the emissivity of stainless steel is so bad that you can't get an accurate temperature reading on it. 140 degrees. 
for my Australian brothers. We're right around 59, 64, 59 Celsius. I'm free at last. I can set this down for a while. Man, I got it bad, dude. I'm not exactly clear on the absorption rate of nitrogen dioxide into water. But take note of the brownish color of this hose. But the discharge hose is as clear as can be. See if I can get some contrast here. So it does appear we're scrubbing all of it anyway. That you, they say if you can see the gas, you're in the thousands of parts per million. Not saying there isn't still a detectable, measurable amount of this too, but we are definitely scrubbing. There is a clear difference. As far as the gas fumes coming off of this thing, it's because it's nitric acid, it's always going to put off a gas, and it will destroy every micro switch in the building. Anything that's got a micro switch in it, like this, in your computer, um, all that kind of stuff. These acid vapors will wreak havoc on things like that. They'll also rust out all your tools and hinges in the building and stuff. And so we are venting this gas to the outside. But I wanted to show you guys that it does appear we are effectively scrubbing the gas. All right, guys, so I'm making a rough guess on the 25 watts actually making it into the process. That transformer is very hot to the touch. I got a little fan sitting on it now. It's a little warm. It's got to be every bit of 50 watts of heat coming off of that. Maybe only 25, I don't know. A soldering iron is 25 watts, but probably another 50 watts there. So I'm thinking maybe only 25 watts is going to the chemical conversion. If that's the case, it, it may not be. I may not be that, that lucky. This is the volume of nitric acid that would be produced every two hours if we are, in fact, getting 25 watts into the enthalpy, into the heat of formation. So, this is kind of what we have here. It is 90,000 joules per mole of NO that you produce, and that's about 30 grams. It takes about 60 minutes to do this. To produce one mole of nitric acid, we need two moles of NO2 and one mole of water. And that gives us these two substances here. When you heat the water, you convert the nitrous acid to nitric acid. So I kind of crossed that out. So we can see here that that should give us approximately two hours for 63 grams of HNO3 or 41.65 cc's of liquid. And this is just food coloring in water so we could get a visual representation of what we're doing here. And I'm gonna be testing that. And if that's the case, um, the people telling me this isn't worth it are insane. I mean, I can't describe to you the joy of having this thing running. I feel like I got a slot machine going in the background, even though it's cost me money in electricity. I have ideas of hooking this up to a windmill or a solar panel setup.